I have more AI news for you. I know that's crazy, but it's just a lot of stuff going on. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? And of course, before we get started, don't forget to join my live stream tomorrow where I'm going to experiment with the Photoshop plugin, doing in painting, out painting, compositions, photo bashing, all that cool stuff. Let's get started here. So the first news is really big. Microsoft is going to integrate AI right into Windows and this update is coming soon. So we are basically at the doorstep of the future. Think about like in Star Trek, you talk to the computer, play some music for me, order this kind of thing, call that kind of person. Yeah, that kind of thing is really happening. And this is really deeply integrated into Windows. So in their presentation, they, for example, show that you can talk to the iPod and say, hey, I want to be more focused. What can I do about that? And the AI suggests you could go to the dark mode and turn on your focus timer. And you say, okay, Hey, let's do that. And the AI is doing these settings for you on the computer. Another thing they are showing is that you can drag a PDF into the AI and then ask questions about the content. You can have a summary of what is in that PDF. And I'm pretty sure this is, of course, also going to be integrated into your emails, like, for example, with Outlook, where you can summarize the emails you get and then have the AI write a professional response for you. Another thing they are showing here is that you say, hey, I would like to listen to some music and the AI is suggesting some styles that you might like and you say, yeah, okay, that sounds good. So the AI is playing that for you. You don't even have to touch the software. And I say that this is working with all of the apps on Windows. Now, I don't know if this is really working with all of the apps, but most of the apps is already pretty amazing. Now, I want to bring up one point here. When I heard Windows AI integration, I was on one side super excited about that because I love that idea. But on the other hand, I was a little bit concerned because as you know, on your computer, you do some private things too. And usually for that, you have your private browsing. But if the AI is integrated right into your system, it basically watches you 24 seven. It sees all the things you're doing. So privacy concern that is one thing but there is also another concern and that is life as a service now what does life as a service actually mean on the surface it means that the service is so deeply integrated into your life that you're dependent on it now here's an example on how you already have that life think about google a lot of you already are using their services every day google search gmail google contacts google drive google photos the backup of Android, all these kind of things. Now, the more you use the service, the more you upload things to that service, and also the more you interact with the items on that service. For example, the adjustments to the photos on your Google Drive, this will bind you to the service because you can't export this information without losing these adjustments and these connections between the data points. So you are already bound by the system. But now, of course, if you have an AI integrated in your life as an assistant, this is not just a passive integration, it is an active integration in your life. And more and more, you will execute all of these tasks through the AI rather than interacting with the software yourself. So you will be bound in an active way to that AI, to that service, and switching over to another service will become increasingly hard or even impossible. I don't want to be too negative here because I'm really looking forward to the AI integration into Windows 11. But thinking about life as a service and what that means for us is also an important part of moving forward because we have to figure out how much do we allow AI in our life and how much control do we want to have by companies over us. Actually, while we are at scary AI news, I have another nugget for you. And this one is coming from Tesla. Now, this completely blew my mind when I first heard it, because what they are doing is they use AI to track your driving behavior. And based on how you drive, it raises or lowers your insurance account, how much you have to pay. So being a bad person is 
punished by them by having to pay more. Kind of reminds you of what China is doing with their experiment of these kind of social points you're getting. So that's pretty scary. But when we look at what they actually track and how you're getting punished for that. Now, one thing here is they're tracking how fast you drive. And if you're going excessively fast, a lot of times you have to pay more. And that kind of is understandable. But then also they track if you drive at night. And if you drive at night, you have to pay more for your insurance. I do understand and I do applaud that they punish people for driving too fast, especially over the allowed limit. But at the same time, I really have to point out that punishing people for doing things wrong has to be the power by the government, not by private companies, because we voted for the government. We did not vote for the companies. And so they shouldn't really have that kind of power. That is very strange. Also, of course, at that point when a car company is doing that, you can kind of imagine it won't take too long that other insurances are picking up on that. And of course, they are going to lure you in by saying you're going to pay less. But of course, at the same time, you might pay more if you're not the ideal citizen for that. Okay, okay, before this turns into a Black Mirror episode, let's go here with some fantastic news. And this is NVIDIA Research. Because what they have done, and you probably already have it on your computer, is a driver update that will make what you're doing with automatic 1111, with Vlad Diffusion and so on, two times faster, much more powerful. Shout out to Alexander Webley for his comment. Thank you very much. Now, there's a little caveat to that, and that is that this is using the Microsoft Olive system, and this means that the models have to be converted to the ONNX format first so that can actually benefit from this speed bump by the driver. But I'm pretty sure that the community will pick up on that really quickly. They already have a GitHub page out there to convert these models into the new format. And I'm pretty sure we will see that speed and that power as soon as possible. Now, the next thing that is really amazing is an update of Automatic 11.11 that pretty much flew under the radar. Shout out to Eagle1986 for your comment. Thank you for that. I put up a list here for you on the screen so you can read through all of the points. But I want to point out some of the major points here. One of the biggest things that's happening here is that now Automatic 1111 is also on Torch 2. And that means if your graphics card supports that, you will see a huge bump in speed for your image generation. Also, they did some quality of life changes. One of the changes I personally really appreciate is that in the scripts, in that pop down menu, you now have a X epsilon set plot. So you can render three different value changes at the same time, allowing you to automate your experimentation in a much bigger way. And of course, this is also creating the overview maps for the results in three versions now based on your input. So that's also really helpful. And one thing that is absolutely perfect for my use, because as you know, I love to upscale with image to image, is that now they have a ratio tab in the image to image dialog. So you don't have to go in the X and Y values to change things. You just go to the tab and change the ratio, for example, to two times, three times, four times in that dialog. And if you haven't updated Automatic 11 in a long time, I would suggest to you to actually delete the Venf folder and then start Automatic 1111 again. It's going to download a lot of stuff again for you, but then you have a more cleaner install that should run smoother and faster for you. Another option if your automatic 1111 is already pretty slow is to just move everything to a different folder and make a complete new fresh install of automatic 1111 and then move all of your models, LoRa's, textual inversions and so on back into the new folder. Of course, also the images you have generated so you're not losing any kind of data, but then everything should be running smooth, fast and powerful. 
powerful. Another really interesting news is Stable Diffusion Reimagined. Shout out to Martin Cholte. And this is basically very similar to what I showed you yesterday with prompt free diffusion. Now the interesting thing here is you don't even need any control net input for that. You just drag your image into their interface and they are going to create four similar images for you. They have very nice previews. You can also test it on their page. Although the testing is very limited, I uploaded two images and already at the second image it said, sorry, we are out of generations. You can't test this anymore. So a little bit more would be nice. However, this is coming from ClipDrop. They have already done pretty interesting tools in the past. For example, here you can see a Relight tool that I've actually done a video on this channel eight months ago. And then they have another tool where you can remove the background, which is similarly good working to Photoshop. So it's a pretty nice tool. And the final news I have for you today is that the Stable Diffusion XL model training is at 50% and at that level link under Emigur, you can see some really mind blowing, amazing and beautiful examples of what this can do. This is really crazy. It's coming really close to what Midjourney can do. And I can't wait for this to be released. Now, personally, I really hope that Stable Diffusion XL will run on most GPUs out there so that everybody can use that. Because personally, I'm a strong believer in freeing the art, giving everybody the ability to follow their inner voice. And also please join me tomorrow in my live stream where we're going to experiment a lot more with all of these cool things. And of course, I'm pretty sure I still forgot some AI news. So let me know in the comment. I might give you a shout out in my next video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.